G'day family and friends. Welcome to TV Black Box. My name is Jack Wilson, and without further ado, I must follow protocol and out of respect, place and an acknowledgement going forward. So first, I would like to share my respect, my gratitude and my acknowledgement to the traditional custodians of this land that I live on today, which is Jabakai country, up here in Karanda, far north Queensland. And I want to respect and acknowledge everyone out there for wherever you're tuning in from, whatever land that you originate, whatever land that you live on now, and also acknowledgement and respect to your culture and your bloodline. So this, at the moment, out of the bottom of my heart, I'd like to set the scene and share this experience with you all to just feel within your heart, wherever you are tuning in from, to remember the ones past, future and present and to give them strength and to give them love for this moment. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the show. See you later. Welcome to the TV Black Box Awards. Tonight, Carl Stepanovic, Ida Batros, Larry Emta, Jessica Rowe. Jack Wilson from Ninja Warrior. Angeli Rao. Lincoln Lewis. Steve Graham from Outback Truckies. Andy Lee. And the legendary Pete Smith. Goldman, and this is the 2021 TV Black Box Awards. Here's your host, Rob McKnight. Hello, and welcome to the TV Black Box Awards. It's just me and all my friends. Hello, hello, hello. Now, look, tonight, it was meant to be the night of nights. The night below years were meant to be held, but as we know, COVID has played havoc with plans, and the awards have been postponed until next year. However, we thought it was important to recognise the hard work everyone in the TV industry has put in to make sure programs kept being made this year and kept getting to end. Now, look, we're not trying to replace the Logies, and in fact, you know, I think everyone knows I'm a big lover of the Logies. And in fact, my, heart's, my heart goes out to the many people who are out of work tonight because the event is not taking place. Think about this. There's caterers, stagehands, production crew, seat fillers. They've all lost income without the event taking place. But, you know, I don't think anyone has felt the effects more than the people selling product that specifically gets put into the toilets at the Logies. I think you all know what I mean. And, and, and look here, this was um, some product Queensland Police found earlier today because someone didn't get the memo the awards had been cancelled. So they found that <laughs> during a routine sweep and I'm reliably informed that was just the gear for people working on breakfast TV. So uh, yeah, that was going to be a good morning, I'm sure. Look, tonight, despite the loss of the Logies, we will pay tribute to the people and shows that have kept us entertained during the pandemic. The final nominees for each category has been determined by popular vote. That means you. Readers of the TV Black Box website added names to a Google document for each category. Networks and streamers were also invited to take part, as were the people at Media Spy. Then the first round of voting took place to determine the finalists for each category. The second round of voting closed tonight at 6pm Australian Daylight Time, and those votes will determine the winners of every category except for one. That category is the TV Industry Worker of the Year, and that is being decided by the team at TV Black Box. All right, enough of all that. It's time to get down to the actual awards. Let's meet our first presenter. And with that, Angelie Rao from The Real Housewives of Melbourne joins us. I am so glad you're here for the TV Black Box Awards, Ange. So am I, Rob McKnight. And may I say 
how wonderfully selfless it is of you to step in for the um, blogies, I believe we're going to be calling it this year. What are you trying to say? The blogies? Are you trying? <laughs> Nothing. Wow. You are, you are, you've changed. You are a housewife now. <laughs> Now, Ange, that's that's the thing. You've been making news, my dear friend. Uh, you shocked Australia. You're, I think you're the first person in the history of the world to actually walk out of a Real Housewives franchise. Um, I am definitely the first one to walk out in her first season. I think there have been a couple um, around the world, but they've done other seasons previously. Um, so, yes, I am a world first. <laughs> of course you are. I would expect nothing less. Uh, I know there's been a lot of trolling. I know you've had a lot of attacks. Is everything okay? Uh, how are you coping with a different level of fame? When you were a CNN anchor, you had fame, of course. You went into millions and millions and millions of homes. This is different when it's reality TV, isn't it? It certainly is. And, you know, the number of people that I get saying, you know, no one knows who you are, Dals. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Wikipedia dolls. <laughs> <laughs> and also, what does that matter? Uh, you've provided good entertainment. I'm sure they'd love you back next year, Ange. Would you go back? Um, I think we better know the answer to that one, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be excommunicated by my mother. I really don't. <laughs> it was skating on thin ice anyway. <laughs> well, you'll always be part of TV Black Box and the McKnight family. You know I love you very, very much. Uh, and why don't we get into the first reward uh, award to reward someone? And it's a very it's a category now. It would seem close to your heart. Absolutely, um, I am honoured to announce the nominees for the most popular reality TV show. Most popular reality show. Australian Survivor, Channel 10. Oh! Yay! <laughs> Top two. Let it pour. Big Brother Australia, Channel 7. Marley! Yeah! The Block, Channel 9. Having seen the schedule, yes, is probably considered cheating. Lego Masters Australia, Channel 9. David and Gus. <laughs> SAS Australia, Channel 7. We are now at the end of the course. The Voice Australia, Channel 7. Bella! And the winner is... Australian Survivor. Well, despite previous attempts by Nine and Seven to produce a local version of the global franchise, it was Channel 10 which turned the format into a success when it launched Australian Survivor in 2016 with Jonathan LaPaglia. Congratulations to everyone involved. Yeah, oh, awesome stuff, Ange. We look forward to the next reality TV show you do. Uh, maybe the jungle is calling. <laughs> um, oh, no, I'm, I'm thinking let's go big. SAS. Ah, good one. All right. Uh, we will see you soon. Thanks for joining us tonight, Ange. Pleasure. For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. All right, we couldn't have an award ceremony without this man, Carl Stefanovic from the Today Show. <laughs> Welcome to the TV Black Box Awards. Robbie, lovely to see you all. Lovely to see everyone at home. And it's great to be at another awards ceremony. It's been uh, way too long between drinks. <laughs> well, uh, it's nobody... funny you say that, Carl, because <laughs> your lovely wife, Jasmine, she's a little bit worried. She knows that you possibly like a drink, and she sent me this picture. This is what she's done to your bar fridge, Carl. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something, too. It's my first day of... Oh, no. oh live TV! The camera's gone down! <laughs> no, I haven't had anything to drink. Nothing to drink. <laughs> uh, right. It's, it's, it's like first... you're in a war zone trying to make, give a little bit of extra... <laughs> 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 war 
war zone on, on the friendly north shore of New South Wales, Sydney. Um, my friend, uh, it's my first day of holidays today too, so um, it's, a, it's a special one to be up doing this for you guys. Um, it's, it's really a privilege, so well done. It's, uh, it's going to be a big night, I reckon. I think it will be. And, mate, really appreciate you being here. And have to say, you've got to be happy with the Today Show. Uh, you and Ali are making a great team. And I've got to tell you, the new star, uh, she's really surprised me, Brooke Boney, has really yeah. come to her own uh, in that format. I think the whole team is really gelling. Uh, you're getting yeah. some big gains. You must be pretty happy and excited about 2022. Yeah, we are. And I think um, we've put in so much hard work um, this year. Everyone's put in. I mean, anyone on Breakfast TV works hard, but but we've we've made a lot of gains because we've worked really hard at trying to win back audience and do the best possible product we can. But there's an awful long way to go um, for us to, to get to sunrise. So we'll just keep chipping away uh, and ho hopefully we'll get there. But Alison Langdon and and Brookie and um, Timmy and Alex, I mean, they're just superstars. And I, I love mm. going to work with them every day of the week. It's just brilliant. It's funny you say that because you actually look like you're having fun again. And I think yeah. that translates to the audience as well. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I love doing it. Um, and, you know, there was a time then a few years ago when, you know, I mean, I think everyone goes through it when they're a bit sick of getting up at four, four in the morning or 3.30 in the morning and, and going to work. But then as you get older, you realise it's just the best job in the world. Um, so I'll keep doing this as long as I can, as long as they want me. So you're in it for the long haul? Definitely. I love it. I love it. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, that's it's the, the thing. Job. I it's, come it, back to it, mate. You the... look as though you love it. You look as though yeah. you're enjoying it. You turn on the Today Show and you're getting the news, you're having a laugh, and it seems genuine. It's not stage laugh. Yeah. Well, as you know, you can't do this job 16 years and, 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 and stage anything really. I don't think you've, you've got to be able to be yourself and let the audience see, um, you know, who you are, you know, at the end of the day, that's all you've got. Um, so, so, yeah, Robbie, I'll, I'll do this as long as I can, as long as the network wants me to. Gee, there's a massive stink on here at my house. <laughs> the dogs are going, the dogs are barking, Robbie. The dogs are barking. <laughs> <laughs> they know you've got some work to do. They're telling us to hurry it up. Mate, uh, yeah. over to you for the next award. Okay, the next award is for the most popular comedy program. Most popular Australian comedy program. Fisk, ABC. Have you been paying attention? Channel 10. The 100 with Andy Lee. Channel 9. Sean McAuliffe's Mad as Hell. ABC. Rosehaven. ABC. And the winner is, have you been paying attention? Well done to everyone there. It's a terrific show. Now, let's look at the nominees for Best International Comedy Program. Most popular international comedy program. Hacks. Stan. Ted Lasso. Apple TV. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, SBS. The Flight Attendant, Binge. Friends, The Reunion, Binge. And the winner is, and this was one of the tightest calls of the night, Ted Lasso, Apple TV, and what a show it is, Robbie. It really is. And, and Carl, it was literally, this was the tightest race we've seen in the Black Box Awards. There were not many votes in it. It was changing throughout the day. They mobilised yeah. their fans, these two shows. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine was a close second. I love Ted Lasso, though, too. It makes me cry and laugh. I haven't seen it. it. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> it's on my Christmas list. Hey, Carl, thank you so much for your generosity. We look forward to a big Today Show in 2022. Uh, if you don't beat Sunrise, uh, I'll give you a quick 
kick in the pants. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just making <laughs> I'll stuff up now. <laughs> I'll look forward to it. <laughs> Thank Thanks you, very man. much, mate. Christmas, mate. Well done. For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. You know, a lot of people try to write off traditional television, but funnily enough, it still creates more headlines, I reckon, than any other industry. Think about it. We read about celebrities. We talk about the industry. In fact, TV Black Box gets 1.8 million page views per month. That equates to 385,000 unique users. That's pretty extraordinary for an industry apparently nobody cares about. So we thought we would take a look at some of the stories that have made headlines this year. And to do that, I'm joined by Kevin Perry and Steve Malk, the co-editors of TV Black Box. Gentlemen, welcome to the TV Black Box Awards. Oh, fantastic to be with you, Rob. How exciting is this? What it's a glittering cool. night it is. It is a big night. Uh, we're seeing lots of surprises. I'm really excited about what's happening. But Malk... Let's talk about ratings because the ratings year, the official survey year has just finished. What have we learnt? Well, we've learnt heaps, Rob. We've learnt that everyone's a winner. It doesn't matter who you are, particularly when it comes to the commercial shares across the year and how the Olympics played out. Seven, nine, ten, everybody won something. Now, there is legitimacy to that, isn't there? Because seven have won total people and nine have claimed the important demos of 25 to 54, and they lump in grocery buyers with that, and 16 to 39s. Yeah, and it's even a little bit finer than that, Rob. When we talk about either just the five city metro, the five capital cities, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, Perth, uh, nine are claiming some big wins across not just the demos, but even in some cases, they get to pick up the total people wins. But of course, when seven make their claims, they're in national figures, including the regional uh, ratings. So it means that for at least both those two networks, they're both legitimately winning with a big asterisk. <laughs> uh, Kevin, I have always been a traditionalist and always talked about total people. This would be the first year I've really started coming on board with the demos. Um, I'm being told that demos leads to revenue. Really, at the end of the day, and I had an interview with James Warburton on Friday, which is going to be on the TV Black Box website, and he said the most important thing is revenue. Well, that's absolutely right. And the revenues come from the demos, you know, the you know, the 16 to 39 and the 25 to 54, th these are the people that advertisers are trying to target. And so if you re read the releases that we get from nine and seven, they're both talking very specifically about demos. At the same time, we've got our good old friends at Channel 10, they're talking about demos as well, except they're talking about this under 50 demo, which they're, they're still kind of thinking that they're in front on, but it's a little bit hard to work out the mass. Well, nobody in the industry can justify that. And I speak to executives all the time. They, they see that stance as a joke. They're not number one in under 50, no matter how you cut, slice and dice it. So what's their game? Uh, perception plays a big part here, doesn't it, Kevin? Oh, it's all about perception. It's all about trying to sell yourself, trying to trying to get that little bit of a, a jump on the competition and, and trying to, to dominate the conversation in amongst advertising circles. But at the end of the day, the advertisers, they're not idiots, they're not fools, and they understand the figures better than anyone, and so they're not buying the crazy that Channel 10 is selling. Now, talk to me about that, because 9 and 7 are pretty competitive, and it'll be interesting to see, Mulk, if 7 get more competitive next year with their Q1, because that will really give them a solid base. Where does mm. that leave 10? We've seen lots of headlines recently about that they can't survive. Uh, we we know that they'll hold on for as long as they can, but they seem to be making a play for streaming with Paramount Plus. That seems to be the focus now. Yeah, a lot of energy has been poured into the success of Paramount Plus in Australia, and and in part that's being um, supported by their American owners in Viacom CBS because they can just channel content into that library, as we've seen just recently, even with uh, Viacom CBS buying back. Star Trek Discovery from Netflix and landing it onto Paramount Plus here, even in Australia, when that wasn't expected until next year. That's mm -hmm. a really important play for them. And, and look, we all want to see TV survive and flourish in Australia and commercial TV especially. Unfortunately for 10, they're in a really difficult position where in the commercial TV race, they're definitely third. 
And when yeah. we talk about the five channels, they are slipping into fourth more often than not, and that's a dangerous place to be. It certainly is. Look, there, there are many issues we could have spoken about tonight, but ratings is one of the biggest ones because of the impact it has on the decisions we that are made by executives and what we see at home. Before we let you go, I want to know what has been your favourite show of the year, Kevin? Um, for mine, oh, goodness, that is an out there question. I think <laughs> as far as favourite reality show, I would definitely say Australian Survivor. I think production values on that are so far ahead of any other reality right, show. Yes on air in this country by, by a mile. And I'm really looking forward to this next season. Um, from a drama perspective, I think it's on air at the moment, Succession. I mean, it is just standout blockbuster drama. This season has just risen the bar to a level way above anything that they've even done before. And I mean, it's, it's been a year of magnificent television, really. So there, there's so many highlights we could have chosen. What about you, Mark? Uh, Rob, it's never an easy question to ask me because I'll give you about 13 shows. I know, I'm a bit uh, I, echo, <laughs> <laughs> I echo absolutely the, the shows that... We'll go longer raised. than the Logies. <laughs> yeah, I'll, look, I'll try and keep it to time, but uh, with you know much deference to the fact that this will finish tomorrow. Um, <laughs> look, uh, there's probably a couple I want to highlight really quickly. Mayor of Easttown was phenomenal. Uh, Short-run drama coming out of the States. Absolutely love that Kate Winslet was incredible. Um, I have really enjoyed the cheap seats and seeing it grow and find yeah. a place on Tuesday nights on 10, yeah, um, which has been uh, a, a real high point, you know, the baby brother to have you been paying attention, which is also gold. Gogglebox, back with an absolute vengeance this year, and I've loved every minute of watching that. Watching it with my family has been great. But my favourite TV dog of all time, the Brisbane-based Little Blue Healer Bluey, she is stunning and doing massive business for the ABC and so great, so fun. Well, Malk and Kevin, a great list. And Malk, uh, you finished much earlier than I expected, so we might be able to fit in a few more awards. Pete Smith is waiting. Guys, thank you so much. Congratulations on all the success of TV Black Box. Amazing that we can put an award ceremony on like this, and we couldn't have done it without you guys. You know that this is a team that I love being part of. Thank you very much, Kevin and Malk. Fantastic. Have a great night, Rob. It's my shout at the bar. <laughs> For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. We wake up with them every day, but who is your favourite breakfast team slash show? Well, there's only one person for the job to tell us, Miss Jessica Rowe. Hello, Jess. Hello, Rob. What a joy to be a part of your awards. I think it's so fantastic what you're doing. It has been such a tumultuous time for the media industry and we need to celebrate, to mark some milestones and to sort of say congratulations to everyone. So I'm so excited to be wearing my sparkles with my favourite <laughs> cat background for you. I did. I was going to say um, something about the cats. Of course you got cats into it. <laughs> I had to do something for you. I was going to be coming from to, uh, I was going to be coming from my wardrobe, but technology let me down. I couldn't get my ah. laptop working, so my wonderful IT help desk, otherwise known as my teenage daughter, <laughs> helped me. And she, we've moved downstairs now, and we've got the pussycat background. I thought that might be of interest. Uh, just. One, you were so generous. As soon as I spoke to you about this, you were like, yes, I'm there, whatever you need. You were fabulous. But I thought breakfast is perfect for you. You've worked in breakfast. You've worked in morning TV. Uh, would you ever want to do those hours of breakfast TV again? No. <laughs> in a word, no. I think the people who work in breakfast television deserve a bravery medal. The hours are punishing the attention can be excruciating, but I tell you what, we wake up with all of them, don't we? And they've mm. done the most phenomenal job during some really trying times. And I think, you know what? I mean, I know we hear it time and time again, but I think every one of these nominees is a winner. Well, I shall, on that note, hand it over to you, Jess. Well, with... Uh, with no further ado, or, or do you say with further ado? I'm not quite sure, but here... The questions, are... Jess, the questions. 
<laughs> no, no, it's the important stuff we've got to work at. Here, we'll open a poll. How do we say it? Because I don't know either, up, to be honest. <laughs> Just, I'm hoping you're going to fix it. Fix it Without all further ado, I think is the saying. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jess, we haven't got anyone in our ears to tell us uh, what to say or what to do. Because <laughs> I'm sure you missed that. <laughs> oh, I, I miss you in my ear, Rob. Oh, course, I don't I'm believe that for a right second. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me now say here are the nominees for the most popular breakfast show. Most popular breakfast show. Sunrise, Channel 7. <laughs> Between COVID, climate change, and everything else that's happened this week, I quit. Today, Channel 9. Okay. <laughs> News Breakfast, ABC. Bulging what? Disc. Disc. I said disc. That's what, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. just gonna drink water. <laughs> hey, nobody you. <laughs> Why me? Why me? Don't don't bring me into this. Uh, it's my mic washing. <laughs> I hope not. Big Mob Brecky, NITV and SBS. Well, look, you know the budget's huge out here. We've um, you know got a huge uh, <laughs> sifter here. <laughs> 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 Weekend Sunrise, Channel 7. That's Matt's way of getting around, telling everyone that he's taken up decoupage. <laughs> and the winner is Sunrise. Hooray. Congratulations to all my friends at Sunrise on the Seven Network. Big love to you all. And I know that they have won the ratings here again. So congratulations. All right. It is now time to have a look at the nominees for the most popular morning show. Most popular morning show. The Morning Show, Channel 7. Today Extra, Channel 9. Studio 10, Channel 10. And the winner is... The Morning Show. Congratulations to Larry and Kylie and to all the team there. But I do want to send some special love to my beautiful friends at Studio 10 as well. Oh, absolutely. And Larry will be joining us a little later. Uh, oh. Yes. So that'll be fun. And I've got to tell you. Let's be honest, in our day, we would have won this award because we would have run a campaign and a half. We would not have allowed anything to, to anyone to beat us, would we? <laughs> no way. And I tell you what, if anyone can run a campaign, you can, Rob. You, there is no one else like you. And, and didn't we have some fun? I know you meant to be doing awards, but... Didn't we have fun at the Logies? I oh, remember one. No, we can talk about this, Jess, because I, I, the way I describe my Logies experience is I went three times and uh, P, PD, who's coming up on the show later as well, it's like it's almost like I've called everyone I know to come on this show tonight. <laughs> um, but PD uh, gave me, the first time I went to the Logies, he had just come back from overseas. He was sick as a dog and he said to me, Here's my key. Go and get my ticket. You're going the Logies. And what did I do? I got way too drunk. I uh, <laughs> sat on Laurie Oakes' lap. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then the second time I went, I didn't drink a thing. And then the third time, found the balance. It's all <laughs> about balance, isn't it? But, geez, that time when the Studio 10 gang went together, when we had campaigned for an award, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that, that was, was a good fun. night. Oh. We had such a ball. And for me, the Logies always have such a special place in my heart as well because it's where I met Petey. 
many oh, years ago. I didn't know we this. Got me a glass of champagne and we were chatting and I was dating someone else at the time who really, let's not even mention that person, <laughs> <laughs> which was a good sign. But, and I remember talking to Petey and thinking, why can't I meet a good man like this? This is the sort of person I need to be going out with. So a few months later, when I was single again, I picked up the phone and I asked Petey on a date. And it worked. And look at you guys it now, works. inseparable, uh, stronger than ever. Jess, uh, I could talk to you about Logie experiences and everything else for ages. Thank you so much for making the time tonight. Uh, you are a dear friend and I appreciate everything you have done for me. And uh, maybe once the borders come down, we can all have a catch up again. I would absolutely love that. And Rob, well done tonight. I'm so proud of you. And I think it is so important that we recognise all the amazing people in our industry. Oh, thank you, Jess. Much love. We'll see you soon. Bye. Mwah, mwah. I could still be talking, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mike Goldman has come in. Hello, Mike Goldman. Of course you haven't missed an award ceremony. I have not missed an award ceremony since I remember back in the uh, early 1970s when you first started and you had some really big names. They were all there. It was amazing. And now, look, you're on this massive set. You just keep upgrading every single year. <laughs> you're the past of thousands working on this show. No doubt about you. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Hey, look, I am actually pleased you're here, but although you must be devastated, tonight was meant to be the Logies at the Star on the Gold Coast. Uh, you must be devastated they're not up here uh, this year. I know, yes, the, uh, the Logies is the uh, one night of the year that I'm allowed out on the town. So uh, it, is, it is actually a big disappointment for me. And uh, no, what am I talking about? I never get fucking invited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, believe me, I do, I do understand the curse of that. Uh, the first time I went, I went on Peter Overton's ticket. So, you know, I understand. <laughs> Peter Overton's ticket. True Which story. Ticket, like, I guess. Imagine that moment, though, when I walked up they, at the check-in and uh, I'm there with Peter Overton's ticket and I hand it over and I'm like, they know who Peter Overton is. This is not some unknown person. Anyway, hand it in. All right, no dramas. And it, was, it wasn't a problem at all. So I was worried about nothing. Was it a big night with Peter Overton? Did he, did he get you into the shops or what happened? Uh, he was sick. That's why I got his ticket. Uh, and I was saying before that, uh, yeah, it was a big night. Too big, too big. All oh, right, so you actually got to sit at, at his table with uh, all the other hoity-toities from Channel 9. Uh, I sat with Laurie Oaks, Yana, Yana Van, and uh, Roy and HG were opposite. I, I don't think they were happy with my drunken antics, but, uh, yeah, it was a fun, it was a <laughs> what a first night at the Logie should be. <laughs> but the less said, uh, well, the better, I think. <laughs> what, what award have you got? Moving on, Mike, what award have you got for us? Mate, well, I am here to present most popular presenter and most popular duo. Are you ready for the nominees? Most popular presenter. Jonathan LaPaglia, Australian Survivor, Channel 10. Hamish Blake, Lego Masters Australia, Channel 9. Sean McAuliffe, Sean McAuliffe's Mad As Hell, ABC. Sam Pang, The Front Bar, and Have You Been Paying Attention? Carl Stepanovic, Today, Channel 9. And the winner is... <laughs> Sam Pang! <laughs> oh, totally legit! Totally legit! <laughs> Sam, you were great. One of my favourite presenters. And you've got a big career ahead of you, my friend. <laughs> Sam Pang. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> it's brilliant. No, I'm very happy with that. Uh, what's your next well, award? <laughs> the, the greatest presenter <laughs> awarded by the worst presenter. <laughs> I, 
Okay, it's time for the best duo. Most popular duo. Andrew Winter and Neil Whitaker. Love it or list it Australia. Chris Brown and Julia Morris. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Larry Emder and Kylie Gillings. The Morning Show. Carl Stepanovic and Alison Langdon. Today. Rebecca Gibney and Eric Thompson. Back to the rafters. And the winner is. The winner <laughs> is. Oh, lucky. Chris Brown and Julia. Oh! It's Julia, Julia Morris. <laughs> Mike Goldman, you are a bloody legend and you should be hosting the Logies. Oh my goodness. Hosting the Logies. I, you know, I send my resume every year to TV Week and they don't even reply. I don't know what their problem is. Well, hopefully they'll see this. I know they're watching, believe me. Uh, hopefully they'll see this and realise that you should indeed be the host of the 2022 Logies. Mike Goldman, you are a legend. Yep. Thank you so much for being here. Either that or they'll just put out a restraining order. Thank you, Robert Knight. Good job <laughs> you're doing. Bring the Logies flag flying. For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. Hi, I'm Jasmine McKnight. I'd call myself a child actor, but I'm more of a child thrust onto television by an over-enthusiastic father. From my early appearances on The Today Show, where I almost strangled a dingo pup live on air, to playing a young Sarah Harris, to being a cadet entertainment reporter, and who could forget my biggest starring role on the Christmas episode of Studio 10. Oh yeah, the one that never got to air. My dad never did tell me why. Anyway, while children's television has made headlines with the axing of some local productions, it's worth noting that last year, $52 million was spent making children's television drama. And that's led to a lot of great TV, including these nominees for the most popular children's show. Most popular children's show. Bluey, ABC. Butler, the royal bottom is itchy. I demand you scratch it. <laughs> uh, oh yes, that's the spot. Totally wild. Ten shake. Today is our very last shoot. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're all here. <laughs> Kangaroo Beach, ABC. What have we told you about wearing clothes? It's in the water. You said to wear a swimming suit. BTN, ABC. I, I just need some directions. Yeah, no worries. Where are you going? I, I need to get to net zero. Net zero. And this is all you have? No! No! Itch, ABC. I'm learning the tuba. Because drums weren't loud enough? Yeah, it's really heavy. <laughs> It's a tumour! And the winner is... Bluey! The Logie Award winning show is currently airing its third series, which is made in and inspired by Brisbane. Congratulations to everyone who works on this amazing show. For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. Okay, it's time to find out who you have chosen as Australia's most popular actor. And for that, we go all the way to Florida where Sarah Monaghan, child actress extraordinaire, is standing by. Sarah, I love the fact you get up in the middle of the morning for a good old TV black box. Not many people would do it. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's better when it's the 
black box podcast because I don't have to like look good. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll am I allowed to make up? <laughs> you always look good, and I would never think anything else, Sarah. You know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Bit of an in joke there. I once uh, said to Sarah, "Oh, your your eyes look very dark," and she said, "I haven't put makeup on yet, McKnight." <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, why don't you do us the honours of introducing the most popular actor? Ooh, I would be excited to. So the nominations include... Most popular actor. Ray Ma, Home and Away, Channel 7. Stephen Peacock, RFDS, Five Bedrooms and a Newsreader. Anna Tour, The Newsreader and Fires, ABC. Celia Pacola, Rosehaven, ABC. Nicole Kidman, Nine Perfect Strangers, Amazon Prime Video. And the winner is Ray Ma. Congratulations, Ray. You beat Nicole Kidman, which is quite a feat. <laughs> Ray Ma, you can't do any better than that. Look at that gentleman. Well a true worthy Aussie of icon. the most popular actor, don't you think, Sarah? Absolutely. I, I worked with Ray 30 years ago. No, 25 years ago. Um, and <laughs> You're showing your age. Guy. <laughs> yes, well, I'm old now, it's fine. Um, <laughs> lovely guy, absolutely deserves the award. He's been on television since I can remember. Um, so, yeah, good for you. Good on you, Sarah, and thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great, well, I guess, a good morning. Yes, I think I'll go back to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone who knows me knows I love a good Logies campaign, and our next guest has done one for the TV Black Box Awards, and now I really want him to win. Steve Graham is from Outback Truckers, and he joins us from WA. Steve, what made you decide to run a campaign for the TV Black Box Awards? Good day. I think it was just that I believe Prospero and the crew deserved it. They're, um, they're definitely worth winning an award. They've done a wonderful job at getting us truckies out there to Australia and the rest of the world. Well, mate, you, uh, you've run a good campaign. People have certainly got behind you. When I looked at the numbers uh, earlier in the week, I saw that Outback Trackers have been taking off. And uh, I've got to say, I really hope you win this thing. Well, thank you, mate. And I can assure you, I really hope that, they, that we win this thing too. <laughs> well, mate, do me a favour. Stay on the line because Larry Emder is going to present that award, sh award shortly on the show. So fingers crossed for Outback Truckers. We'll get your reaction live, win, lose or draw. Are you up for that, Steve? I'm sure he is. Mate, Bit I'm of an internet waiting. connection, I'm maybe. Happy to hear. Excellent. Okay. All right, Steve, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Rob. For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. Well, there's one man I'm always destined to catch up with at the Logies, and how could I have an award ceremony and not ask him, beg him, uh, threaten him not to come along? Larry Ender from The Morning Show and The Chase Australia. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good. Uh, mate, what is Logies night for you traditionally? Because there's not many you've missed, is there? No, I've been at most of them. In fact, in my very early years, I used to sneak into them. When I was a reporter at Channel 10, I wasn't invited, but I, I used to uh, dress up like a waiter and sneak in, which was always <laughs> kind of fun too. Um, but this is exciting because it's the first time I've been able to wear a tuxedo in my bedroom with no pants on. So it's like it's, it's not <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for letting me be part of this. I so hope that's true. Yeah, well, I was going to say it's the first time I've been at the Logies with no pants on, but that wouldn't be true either. <laughs> what, happens at the Logies, what happens at the Logies stays at the Logies. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it is disappointing that we haven't had the Logies for two years. It will be back next year. I think it'll be something special when they return. I think it's in March or something, but everyone will be ready to go to the Logies again, don't you think? 
Oh, 100%. I mean, this tuxedo uh, they got for me for uh, the Carol's show last year, and the idea was that they would amortise the price over the Carol's and the Logies. So, you know, it's got to get it's got to get a second run, mate, and I'm very excited well, about we've, the possibility. Well, we've done it for you here, Larry. Run. It's all sorted. <laughs> I'm sure Seven will uh, uh, find the TV Black Box Awards valid. I'm, I'm sure they'll. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> All right, Larry, why don't you, uh, we've seen Steve uh, from Outback Truckers. He's excited about tonight's award. He's run a campaign. Let's find out if he's been a winner. All right, here we go. The most popular factual program nominations. Most popular factual program. Outback Truckers, Seven Mate. Arms Brush With Fame, ABC. Old People's Home for Four-Year-Olds, ABC. You Can't Ask That, ABC. Australian Story, ABC. And the winner is Outback Truckers. Oh, yes, Steve, you've done it. What would you like to say? <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'll be blown. That's all I can say. Well, I'll be blown, <laughs> mate. That is, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Um, mate, uh, I'm, I'm genuinely so very pleased for you. You ran a good campaign. The people got behind you. So all credit to you and... Uh, we're all just thrilled for you. Congratulations. Thank you. And can I thank a couple of other people? Go for it. Mate, look, firstly, thank you to the, for the TV Black Box Awards and the other nominees. Thanks so much for, for being in there. And, look, I'm honoured. I'll be honoured to accept this on behalf of Julia Redwood and her team at Prospero Productions. You know, they've done a wonderful job of showcasing us truckies, but Australia. They put Australia out there on the in the world, and it is a really great thing. I want to say thank you to that. I can't believe that nine years ago, when Elliot Buchan first approached me, I'd be here accepting an award like this. You know, I thought that that TV and film crews were well. You know that they weren't hard-working, heavy-duty people like truckers. Well, guess what, mate? They are. Mm, I can't believe good. it. I can't thank them enough. Oh, good so, on you, Steve. I'm really pleased you won. Have a have a few champagnes and uh, and we'll see you out on the road soon for the next series. Good on you, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks, photos and fans. Oh, good on you, Steve. Larry, how good's that? I love a Logie's campaign. I like when the dream comes true. I love that. And I'm so glad he won because I didn't want a convoy of angry outback truckers outside the <laughs> Channel 7 studio. That's for sure. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> All right. What have we got next to you, sir? All right, and the nominations for the most popular lifestyle program are... Most popular lifestyle program. The Living Room, Channel 10. Gardening Australia, ABC. Grand Designs Australia. Foxtel. Travel Guides, Channel 9. Better Homes and Gardens, Channel 7. It is Better Homes and Gardens. Congratulations. It's one of the greatest teams, not only on TV right now, but a TV of all time. Congratulations, guys. Well done. Oh, Larry, that's a great result. It's been going for a long time. Yeah. Joanna Griggs so does a fabulous job with that one. A great, great result, I reckon. Absolutely fantastic team. Very worthy winners, Rob, as we always say here on Awards Night. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's a winner except those who lose. Hey, Larry, you are a winner because The Chase is doing great business for Channel 7. Keep up the good work and have a great 2022. Thank you, sir. Thank you, buddy. I've got to go. I've got to put some pants on. It's getting chilly in here. <laughs> 
For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. Well, we're joined by one of the most austere, infamous and influential people in the nation. Oh, sorry, uh, Joe Hildebrand wasn't available. Oh, we've got Ita. Hello, Ita. <laughs> Hello, Rob. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. Sorry, Ita. <laughs> You're very wicked. <laughs> now, Ita, geez, a lot has happened to you since our Studio 10 days. Uh, you are the chairperson of the ABC. Has the role been what you expected or has it been a lot tougher? Uh, the ABC is a real target, isn't it? Well, yes, it is, uh, but it is, but it is the national broadcaster, and and I think it's it's meant to be provocative. It's meant to stir people up, and we certainly do that from time to time. But you know, if you look at the the emergency services, the education programs that we have for children, the high quality drama we put on, I think we're doing a pretty good job. And and I know that Australians support the ABC. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And I will say the ABC just had their upfronts and I actually think it was a very good slate of programming. Uh, I think the people that work at the ABC ITA should be very thankful they've got you in their corner. I don't know a lot of people who would stand up to the government of the day and say, this is our ABC, this is the way it must work and I will protect it. You are fiercely loyal and I think the people of the ABC are very lucky to have you in charge and I genuinely mean that. Uh, congratulations on all your success in the role. Thank you very much, Rob. <laughs> I know you don't like getting compliments, Ida, but I'm giving it to you anyway. <laughs> well, I, I know I appreciate it. I really do. I'm very honoured to be the chair of the ABC. I, well, you know, uh, I remember when you first got the gig and you were talking uh, once you uh, got the gig and we talked about it. You were genuinely thrilled about the role and uh, I think you've really made it your own and I think you're doing a fabulous job, Ita. So, what, you're going to be there for another 20 years, do you think? Um, not likely, but <laughs> at least for the rest of my term, which is five years. Uh, all right. Let's get into the business at hand. What award do you have for us, dear Ita? I'm here to present the most popular news program, Rob, and the nominees are... Most popular news program. Seven News. Four Corners. The Project. Nine News. ABC News. And the winner is Seven News. So well done, Seven News. And now let's find out the nominations for the most popular newsreader. Most popular newsreader. Sandra Sully, 10 News First. Mark Ferguson, Seven News. Peter Hitchner, 9 News. Peter Mitchell, 7 News. Peter Overton, 9 News. And the winner is... Sandra Sully. She's been reading the news for as long as I can remember. Well done, Sandra. And Ita, isn't that interesting? It was a field of men. Sandra was the only woman and she's come out on top. That's a great result. Well, she's, the, she's one of the most experienced news readers in the business. That's for sure. I mean, I think, I reckon she's been reading the news for at least 30 years, Rob. Jeez, she hides it well, doesn't she? <laughs> like you, I <laughs> <laughs> I'll hey, leave that to the viewers, John. <laughs> thank you for being here tonight. Always appreciate you helping out and uh, good luck with the ABC. You have a tough job. You're doing a great job. Thank you for being part of the TV Black Box Awards tonight. Absolute pleasure and good luck for the rest of the evening. 
For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. Well, it's time to find out what is the most popular sports panel program and who better to bring us that news than Jack Wilson from Ninja Warrior. Hello, Jack. Welcome to the TV Black Box Awards. Hey, g'day, guys. Hey, Rob. Cheers, mate. Really appreciate you having me on and looking forward to, you know, seeing what we have in store. Mate, I'm looking forward to seeing what you have in store with Ninja Warrior. You have really created a big fan base with the uh, role you play using your traditional heritage and using that as part of your inspiration for winning? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the message says it all, mate, you know, like culture, um, you know, people, health and well-being. I just didn't think it would have been a better opportunity to get up on that screen, you know, in nothing but a pair of budgie smugglers. <laughs> and, you know, just show people that you can go out, uh, you can overcome your battles and you can believe in yourself at all costs and overcome, you know, any struggle to, uh, and, and have a smile on your face while you do it. But here's the question. Do you uh, put a little bit of extra stuffing in those budgie smugglers? <laughs> right, I think, you know, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I'm luckily... I'm lucky those, those that bit of fabric didn't get caught on an obstacle and rip off and really... <laughs> <laughs> you haven't answered the question, but I'll let you <laughs> off. <laughs> I'll leave it to the viewer's imagination. <laughs> All right, mate. Why don't you bring us the uh, next category, please? So, Rob, I'm here to find out the most popular sports panel program. Let's see the nominees. Most popular sports panel program. NRL Sunday Footy Show, Channel 9. AFL Sunday Footy Show, Channel 9. The Front Bar, Channel 7. Sports Sunday, Channel 9. Offsiders, ABC. So we've got the winner here. It is the front bar, Channel 7, Mick Malloy and the boys. Congratulations, fellas. Well done, well done. And congratulations to you on all the success of Ninja Warrior. Looking forward to seeing you next year in 2022. Jack, you're a legend. Thank you so much for being here on TV Black Bucks. Hey, cheers, guys. Just want to say never give up on yourself and always love yourself. See ya. Thank you. For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. Well, unfortunately, one person didn't get the memo that the star wasn't in use for the Logies tonight. Poor old Lincoln Lewis, you've turned up at the star, I believe. <laughs> what can I say? Dude, I want to be, I just want to be there and I want to know, I want to visualise where the action is, okay? So whether it's happening or not, I'm just going to rock up and hope for the best. I mean, it's kind of what happens with everything I do in life, really, whether I'm playing pool or whether I'm going for an audition or just rocking up there. It's just, uh, just hoping for the best, really. <laughs> well, mate, we love the fact that you have uh, joined us anyway. <laughs> it's not the Logies, but it's the next best thing, hopefully, on a night like this. Uh, mate, but you are going to, we are going to put you to some work and get you to deliver the, uh, another award. Yes, I'm looking forward to it, actually. So, um, yeah, uh, would, you, would you like me to, uh, to say the nominees right now? Oh, let's have a drink. For, oh, yeah, we'll do the nominees. <laughs> but let's, let's go for it. Okay, so the nominees for the most popular Australian drama are... Popular Australian drama. Doctor Doctor. Channel 9. We'll keep fighting. That's what we do in my head. Home and Away. Channel 7. There's a cost of contamination. The whole building needs to be quarantined. The Newsreader. ABC. Good evening. 
and welcome to News at Six. Royal Flying Doctor Service, Channel 7. One minute, seven. No, I'm good. You need a break. Wentworth, the final sentence, Foxtel. And the winner for the most popular Australian drama is the newsreader, ABC, you little legends. Congratulations. I'll tell you what's interesting about that is that uh, Home and Away was actually in front. So there's been a late surge for the newsreader. That's very, very interesting, Lincoln. And, and what does that mean when you're part of a show that wins a, a Logie or something like that? Is it, is, it a, is it just taken for granted or is it actually celebrated? Yeah, well, I, from my personal experience, I was I was frothing. Like, so when I was part of Home and Away, and uh, and when, when I won my logo, I went up there and talked for about, you know, three quarters of the actual ceremony itself. So I do apologize <laughs> for anyone who lost time, they'll never gain back on that. But then when, when Home and Away actually won, I, I, for me personally, when, when we actually got to celebrate that, I was I was frothing every single second. I know so the cast members that were, that were quite new to the show, we were all just there standing around each other and, and just in this real sense of elation. And um, so, look, I from, from my experience, we, we loved every single second of it. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I would like to think that that happens for anyone who's lucky enough to win any form of award in this industry. You, you just um, – to be a working – person in this industry is is you know one thing but then to actually get an award is, is is an entirely new level so yeah congratulations to the winners and and i know that they'll be celebrating well it's interesting you say that because i know the next award uh people are eagerly waiting to uh find out who the winners are uh they are glued to the internet right now from wherever they are in the world because there's a lot of people wanting to know whether they've won this next award that's right. And the category is the most popular international drama. And the nominees are... Most popular international drama. The Good Doctor, Channel 7. Will you marry me? Of course. I love you. The Handmaid's Tale, SBS. I made a promise to hurt them the way we hurt Mayor of East Town, binge. If you don't, I'll kill him myself. Succession, Foxtel. There's a foundational sickness within our father and his company. Yellowstone, Stan. Uh, Lincoln, no pressure, but I know Kate Winslet is watching. So can you deliver her some good news, perhaps? Uh, okay. Well, I mean, seriously, first, first of all, um, I love you. <laughs> she, she may not actually be watching. I may have just said that. But Doesn't anyway, matter. it's all I'm the theatre. <laughs> Whether she's watching or not, she's going to receive those vibes and all of a sudden it's going to be like this moment dawning on her. So that's that's where it's coming from. But the winner for the most popular international drama is The Good Doctor. She oh, wow. That is, a wow. Congratulations to The Good Doctor. A, a big fort and a campaign. I know that the, the voting was very tight in that race as well. So congratulations to that. And Lincoln, congratulations to you. You just continue to kick goals. What does 2022 hold for you, sir? Uh, 2022, hopefully, um, look, it's, it's been a good uh, 12 months in terms of work. Uh, I, I've been able to work. I had a, a film come out with John Jarrett called The Possessed, which is a horror film. I've yeah. got to work with Brian Brown and Greta Skaki recently on their show, Darby and Joan. Um, we'll have the movie called Black Sight getting released early next year. So, look, uh, fingers crossed uh, I can continue to work. Uh, it's, it's one of those, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those times where there, there's a lot of projects coming to the shores, but... Uh, you know, you never really know until you're on set. So fingers, fingers crossed, buddy. Yeah, well, good on you. You are a legend and uh, hope, hope more's out there and make, uh, everyone's going to snap you up. And thank you for your kindness towards us here at TV Black Box. Have a great night at the Star. Put it all on red, mate. Put it all on red. All on red. It's pretty done. I'm already, dude, I, as soon as I get off, I'm going to have to take this suit off because I've already bet that. So I'm going to walk back into 
in my, you know, my good suit, I'm going home in my birthday suit because I've already lost. So my apology <laughs> to everyone who sees me on the way home. Dude, thank you for having me on tonight. Lots of love to you and everyone watching. Have a great rest of the night. Thank you, mate. You too. Cheers. For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. Well, this is the TV Black Box Awards. Thank you for joining us, also known as the Boxies. It's time to meet our next guest, and uh, I'm a little bit thrilled, I'll be honest. It's Andy Lee. Andy, welcome to the TV, all the Boxies, as you rightly pointed out there. Rob, great to see you. You look fantastic. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that, my friend. Hey, um, it's been a big year for you. The 100 is doing fabulous business. Yeah, I mean, it was heaps of fun to make. Um, it was kind of in my wheelhouse because it borrows a lot of the skills from radio, just uh, leaving all the funny stuff to the people out there. But, um, yeah, we've had a ball and we're coming back early next year. Oh, fabulous. Maybe I'll get in one of those Zoom calls and, uh, and join it just to hit the button and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> I'd love to see you there. <laughs> I'm worried, though, Rob. I mean... We had people, we were making this show during COVID, so I imagine it was very easy, easy for people to spend half a day just sitting there on Zoom. Uh, this next one, when everything's opened up, I'm wondering if we're going to get the same amount of people. That's a very good question, although success brings, brings people... Oh, look, you're looking at me. I wondered where you were looking. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What a professional. I love it. <laughs> All right, Andy, what is the category you've got for us today? Uh, the first category, most popular panel show, and the nominees are. Most popular panel show. Q&A, ABC. Ruin, ABC. The Project, Channel 10. The Front Bar, Channel 7. Insiders, ABC. Oh, what a bunch of great shows. I'm a little bit biased, of course, because I was a part of a couple of them, but um, I'm proud to announce the winner tonight is... <laughs> the front bar. Ah, oh, rigged, rigged. <laughs> it could be rigged. I mean, I love all those shows, to be honest. But yes, front bar. I'll be toasting with a Carlton draft, of course, to you guys tonight. Oh, mate, uh, is there anyone you'd like to thank? You're doing the official acceptance speech, I think. So yeah, I'd like to thank everyone except for Sam Pang. <laughs> He's a very I have to go down as a non thanks to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, what's that, the next category you've got for us, Big Fella? Fun show to be a part of. <laughs> Sorry, I spoke. It's the satellite delay, Andy. It's the satellite delay. Of but I do love mm. the fact I get to look into your eyes. Ah, oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, shall I move on to the most popular light entertainment program? Yes, please, sir. All right. The nominees are... Most popular light entertainment program. Gogglebox Australia, Foxtel. Hard Quiz, ABC. Love on the Spectrum, ABC. The Front Bar, Channel 7. Travel Guides, Channel 9. A bunch of my favourites in there as well, but I'm proud to announce that the winner is... Gogglebox Australia. Oh, that's a good win. And, mate, 
You've, you've even provided the soundtrack. How good are you? Uh, Gogglebox <laughs> I like Tribe, has done great business. Um, and, mate, the Cube isn't coming back next year, but the 100 is. So you took a gamble with two networks and one paid off. Yeah, exactly. Channel 10 is completely dead to me. <laughs> Until the next gig. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Until they bring it back the year after. <laughs> That's the well, mate, thank you for joining us tonight on the TV Black Box Awards. We'll catch up with you soon. Thank you for all your support. We really do appreciate it. Cheers, Rob. Well done, buddy. For the latest TV news and exclusive stories, head to tvblackbox.com.au. It's where people in the TV industry get their news. Well, royalty has entered the TV Black Box Awards and there's good reason for it because this is the big one. This is the Lifetime Achievement Award and one person who deserves a Lifetime Achievement Award is none other than Pete Smith. Pete Smith, welcome to the TV Black Box Awards. Thank you very much, Rob. I might point out to everybody that uh, on the things I did on television over, you know, quite a few decades, there was never any category for it. So <laughs> no awards, no awards, but uh, continuity of employment, which anybody in the business will tell you is, is pretty, pretty good. Uh, you have done phenomenally well in the industry. You are still loved. We all know and respect you. And uh, quite frankly, you should be up for this award, but luckily you're not because you wouldn't be able to present it. So, Well, that's right. No, that's <laughs> right. It's an honour to present it too, Rob. Oh, you, you're too kind, Pete. Um, but we've got some peop amazing people in this category. Why don't you take it away and introduce the category for us? All right. Thank you, Rob. Well, the nominations for the TV Black Box Lifetime Achievement Award are... Lifetime Achievement Award. Bruce McAvaney. Dr. Harry Cooper. Liz Hayes. Bert Newton. Ray Ma. And the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award, certainly distinguished company tonight, that's for sure. The Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Bert Newton. Ah. Oh, Fantastic. Pete, that, that must be such a great feeling uh, for oh, your friend who absolutely. we obviously lost recently. Yes, all too recently we lost him. And how significant is this Lifetime Achievement Award going to him, particularly with that loss so clear in our mind? Uh, that's, that's, that's wonderful. And, and we need to be clear, this is publicly voted. This is people going to the TV Black Box website and voting in this category. So uh, we haven't determined the winner of this one. It was the people. So, uh, Pete, I think that speaks volumes about your friend and the man we all loved. It certainly do, it does. You know, some worthy recipients there in the package you just saw. But uh, I just couldn't be more thrilled on behalf of uh, Patty and Lauren and the whole Newton clan, they will be absolutely thrilled, Rob. And you know something, I've got a feeling that uh, in the future, whenever we turn that knob on, we'll press the button on the remote and we look to TV for some light entertainment, I reckon our mate Bert will be somehow looking in, looking in from the wings. I hope absolutely. so. Nice sentiment, Pete. And look, we look forward to catching up with you again very soon. Thank you for being part of TV Black Box, the awards. It is an honor to have you part of it. And I genuinely mean that you are a legend and to have you here presenting this award. Well, it's just perfect. It's the, it's the icing on the cake. So thank you very much, Pete. Been my pleasure. Bye now. Bye bye, Pete. And that brings us to the end of the TV Black Box Awards. Yes, we were late. Yes. 
you know, we got there in the end. Thank you for those that have uh, taken the time to have a look. It was our little way of having a look at the industry and rewarding those who've done such great work. Uh, the Logies will be back in 2022, so we probably won't see you again, but enjoy television. <laughs> and as Pete would say, keep smiling. Bye for now. No, that was Tony Barber, wasn't it, Pete? That wasn't your it phrase. Certainly, you yes, it was. It, it was, but it's uh, very apt. Good on you. <laughs> Pete, have a good night. Thank you for being here. And thank you to you too. We'll see you soon.